Hello everyone. In this video, briefly, I want to talk about connections and interactions of parts if you are simulating an assembly. So if you have more than one part, uh, how do they interact, correct? So here is an assembly of a slider crank and to make it simple, I did a static analysis. So I fixed this end and applied the torque on this member. So of course it's not going to move and will create a stress in the part. So if you go ahead and run this assembly, of course, anything in this assembly will be meshed and you're going to see stress in them, right? So here is my assembly and of course I activated to see the mesh. So you see all of these pins, right, as well as the members, as well as fixed parts and anything will be what will be meshed. And so... Uh, you have basically more analysis to do more unknowns to find now the question is how are these parts connected i mean in assembly you have constraints like concentric like contact like in uh, basically coincidence and so on but in simulations these nodes of members that are touching each other or contacting how are they exactly keeping their contact right so if you look here under the assembly under connections if you expand the connections right there is a branch called connection if you open it you see that right now the only uh, thing i have is called component interaction and it's a global interaction which is bonded so what is that so if we go ahead and look at it you see that the component interaction in general could be bonded could be contact could be free so what is the difference between them? Free is, as the name says, means that the nodes of these, let's say in this case, this pin and this uh, crank hole, right? These uh, nodes, they are free from each other. They can move completely separately from each other and there is no connection between them. Contact means what? Means they should keep some contact, but not all of the nodes have to. So there could be some gaps between the members as long as there is some connection between them. And to show you that, here is a contact. Look, if you can see here, right? You see that the red member and the green member have contact with each other while still what? Still, there is some gap here on this side, but on this side, they keep contact. That is a contact interaction. On the other hand, bonded is like they have basically, they are welded together. So as you can see, those nodes are all attached and you won't see a gap. And you might say, well, in the beginning, there was some gap. That's right. Remember, the node points will touch each other, not the area in between them. But there are points here, the node points, that are going to keep contact with each other as if they are welded all the time. So when you do assembly, the default is bonded. Assumes that that contact will stay for those nodes and they will never separate. There will never be a gap. So that's the first thing I wanted to mention. Now, if you bonded, you see it's clear, but uh, and there should be a gap range for that, right? So basically anything less than uh, something or above something, right? You can define a range for bonded and you can do a similar thing for contact. And say if the gap is more than so much, it's a contact. And if it's more than so much, then consider stabilizing the area. So these are what, these are the basic contacts. And whenever you assemble parts together and have them coincidence and it's concentric, like in this case, you will get this global interaction naturally. Now, uh, there is another thing that we need to look at, and that is these connection advisors. If you go under that, you see a bunch of different connections here. So you can uh, connect parts with pins, with bolts, spot weld, edge weld, bearing, rigid connection, length, and spring, and so on. And if you want, there is description for each and every one of them here in SOLIDWORKS Help. So for instance, if you do a rigid connection, then basically it will make sure that they, those nodes are all attached together. If it's spring, then of course, now they can move relative to each other, but there is a spring connecting them. There is a connection force basically. 
pin is good for cylindrical surfaces, elastic support, and so on and so forth. Now, what's the advantage of a connector? Why should we uh, create a connector? Because you might say, well, they are pins, aren't they? They are, but not to FEA analysis. To FEA, they are just some volumes that need to be meshed and dealt with as such, as you can see here. Look, you see that this guy is, this pin is clearly meshed. And now, if you want to reduce the amount of computations, you can say to SOLIDWORKS, hey, that region is a pin region. So those nodes treat them like a pin connection and you don't need to model this part. You don't need to mesh it. Just treat that region as a pin region. So you're reducing the amount of mesh and you're reducing your computations and it makes your modeling simpler. Now, let me tell you what I mean by that. So here, I'm going to apply a pin instead of uh, basically those two constraints. So I go here and say there is a pin. And it says, what are the two surfaces of the pin, right? So here, you see, you need to define some basically surfaces. And that will create a what? That will create a pin. And of course, you can select other ones too. So for pin, in this case, what I need, let me hide this for a second. What you need is this surface. And then what? The outer surface of that shaft. So I go back and uh, remember that we had this uh, shaft that I can bring back and I can pick that. And uh, I assume it was pin two, right? But we can show it, there we go. And now I want the uh, external surface of that. So I right click here, go select other, and let's see if it allows me to select the pin. Is that going to be the pin? Yes, seems like I got the face of that pin and the face of the conrod. And I uh, in here, you see, there are some options as well for rotational and for um, basically axial stiffness. Okay, and here we don't want to do any rotational stiffness. It's a pin. We want it to be freely rotating. And um, here we go. If we do that, look at what happens. You see? So now that region is replaced by a pin. And if I go and run my study, then that region will not be meshed. You see here? Look. We right click here and say show mesh. You see, that region is not meshed anymore. That is treated like a pin region and that reduces of my uh, reduces my computation, especially if you have a bunch of these. Now, you might say, well, when we did mesh it, we could look at the pin itself also and see whether the pin can endure the load or the pin is going to break. Now that you remove the mesh, how can I ensure that my pin is safe, right? So that's another thing that you have to do when you add the connector to make sure that connector is safe. And by the way, look now, last time only under connections we had this global interaction. Now we also have this extra branch called connectors and under that you have a pin. Okay, so now this one is added. Now how do I make sure this pin is going to survive? To do that, let me show you. First, you need to look at the area of the pin that the stress is applied. So in this case, if I hide this temporarily, what you need is basically this surface here, right? That part. So you need to get that thickness. You need to get that radius. You calculate that uh, area, right? So if we go to evaluate, let's see if it gives me a surface area. Yes, it did. So 0.157 inches squared. That's the area that the stress is applied, right? 0.157. So now I go back and try to make sure my pin is going to survive it. This is what I do. I go back to this pin that I defined. And then I go to this tab called Strength Data. I activate it. And now look. 
now you can provide your tensile strength area right so i go to inch and say 0.157 now of course this is a really sheer stress in this case but um and then um, what is the pin strength so here we can provide some number right so let's say 210 um, newton per millimeter squared so 210 megapascal right and then what is the safety factor that you want for this so i want a safety factor of two for this pin and you okay that so now when you run it it allows you to look at the pin as well without doing the mesh on that so here we go you see all the parts everything is shown of course let me run it one more time so we can see the conrad as well here there we go but for this region the thing that you need to do is go to the results now and then look here say define pinball check plot you click there and then you can include text or something but if you don't want just okay that and then look it gives you this graph and it says if there are pins that need attention which means they are not safe with the factor safety of two and there are pins that are okay and here you see that this pin is okay it's green if it would break it would make it red and listed under needs attention so this pin with that area and with that strength is definitely going to survive with the factor of uh, safety factor of two okay so this is what this is define pinball check and this is defining a pin or a connection here to reduce your computations and also we talked about bonded and contact and free uh, interactions so hopefully this brief introduction to interaction between assembly components and defining connectors and checking on them was useful to you i'll see you in the next video thank you